So let's discuss sex-linked traits or characteristics. So by sex-linked, we mean these are carried on either the X or the Y chromosome or the sex chromosome. Remember that humans have 23 pair of chromosomes. So chromosome 1 through 22 are what we call autosomes. And that last pair is what determines male or female, XX for female, XY for male. And today, so a, a Y-linked trait would be one that's carried on the Y chromosome, and those would clearly only be present in men because those men are, are men because of the Y chromosome. But X-linked traits are going to be found in, in both males and females. However, we see a difference because males only get one X chromosome and females get two. So if we think about um, females get two X chromosomes where males get an X and a Y. So if we are looking at a, a recessive trait, an X-linked recessive trait, and remember that a recessive trait can be masked, right, by the dominant form. So if it's X-linked recessive, that means to inherit that trait or condition. If it's a female, both of the X's would need to carry that recessive gene. However, in a male, there's only one X. So you either have the normal type or you have the affected type. There is no um, double allele there to, dominant, to be the dominant form. So let's work a couple of problems. Let's say, so for example, some um, disorders that are X-linked recessive inherited are hemophilia A, and red-green colorblindness. So let's say we have a woman and her father had hemophilia, but her mother was normal and was not a carrier, had no history in her family. So this woman, okay, we're interested in her parents, right? So her dad XY had hemophilia. So since hemophilia we know is an X-linked recessive trait, the hemophilia allele we need to indicate with the lowercase. So we'll use a little h. So we'll put a big h, excuse me, a little h here, right, because her father was a hemophiliac, therefore he must have had this hemophilia gene. Her mother, completely normal, so we'll use big h's there. Okay, no sign of hemophilia. Now, it's important that we can, even though we're not concerned about the genes on the Y chromosome for this, we have to use the Y chromosome. We have to include it there because this will determine, right, the male or female offspring. So, the woman, the father, or the potential children, the woman's husband, he is completely normal. He's not a hemophiliac. So he has a normal gene. So let's do the Punnett square, okay, to figure out what are the chances that they will have a child who has hemophilia. So we know the man's genotype, we'll include it here, okay. So remember that this, these are the gametes up here, which will be half, right? Egg and sperm only get half the genetic material, so one gamete will get the X, one gamete will get the Y from the male. So we have to determine her genotype. Well, we know that she's XX, right? She's a female. So she had to inherit this X from her father, right? And then one of these from her mother. So this must be her genotype. So we'll include that. And then we'll fill in our Punnett square. And any time we're dealing with an X-linked disorder, we need to make sure that when we report the phenotypic and genotypic ratios that we do it based on male children and female children because it's going to be different. <clears throat> so we divide the Punnett square right here between 
the male and the female children, we see that 50%, right, or 1 to 1, um, x big H, x little h, to x big h, h, h big h. That means that none of the female children are going to be hemophiliacs, right? 50% of their female children will be normal. 50% will be what we call a carrier. In other words, this, this child is not going to have hemophilia because it's an X-linked recessive disorder. So because she has one of the good dominant forms, she won't be a hemophiliac. However, she will be a carrier of this particular gene and can pass it on to her offspring. Now if we look at the male children, we see that 50% of their male children will be normal but 50% of their male children will be affected, will be hemophiliacs. And this is a typical way that you see an X-linked recessive disorder show up in the population. You see a much higher prevalence in the male um, sex because men get one X, right? They have one chance to either get the good gene or the bad gene. Men can't be carriers. So you see more that are affected by an X-linked recessive disorder.